Hey, so I'm here in my office. I picked a different corner. Um, I don't know. I've got some artwork on the walls. I, maybe next time I'll do the New York City skyline. So anyway, all this thinking about shots and how to position myself had me thinking about the nature of cinema, e even in its smallest form, like on YouTube. Anyway, you might have seen the news that um, Grant Vogel, he's a student, um, he created a cinematic playthrough of The Last of Us, um, which divides the entire game into easily digestible segments. I need something smuggled out of the city. So why'd you leave Boston? I reckon it's got something to do with that girl. <laughs> it's got everything to do with that little girl. You know, a lot of people love The Last of Us. They, they talk about it fondly. They remember a lot of things about it. Um, but Grant found, and I think this is really common, that he wanted to, uh, he wanted to do the game this way, or recreate or re-envision the game this way because he found that um, the Last of Us was a story that people wanted to share, but they didn't have time because of families and time constraints, etc. They didn't have the ability to actually experience the entire game. So there are six episodes um, that Grant created. They're about 30 minutes to an hour apiece. The seventh episode is forthcoming. Here's what's really interesting. Obviously, game length has been something that I think about an awful, awful lot in terms of not being able to experience all the games that I want to and being someone who grew up with games uh, and not having the time necessarily to finish the things I'd like to. Experiments like grants are really appealing to someone like me. Um, I don't have kids, but I will someday and they'll pull, you know, pull away at my time and I want to be able to experience things like The Last of Us. So it does raise, you know, it's interesting, Grant's, um, Grant's experiment raises a very interesting question about what The Last of Us is in terms of its context. So this question that I wanted to explore is, is The Last of Us a television series as opposed to a video game? Here, follow me out. So in the world of games, this idea that The Last of Us could be a television series, it makes a lot of sense um, because, you know, The Last of Us specifically is structured like a TV series. Um, here's a chart of The Last of Us story structure. You'll see a lot of different peaks and valleys. This is pulled from a GDC presentation. I um, mean, and story structure is something that goes back for us at Game Show all the way back to our very first episode. We did uh, an episode on the hero's journey and the nature of, uh, of quests and how a lot of stories share this very similar structure. Um, the Last of Us is no different. In fact, a lot of narrative-driven games are modeled after the Hollywood format, which has this three-act structure from beginning, where there's a problem that's presented, and then there's a climax, and then eventually there's a res resolution. Um, but The Last of Us actually might work better um, compared to other types of games for, for a couple different reasons. Um, one is that players are notorious for not being able to finish games. Um, on Steam, for example, only 47% of people who played Portal actually finished it, 42% of of Mass Effect 3 players actually finished it, and only 39% of uh, players of The Walking Dead actually got to the final episode. And those three games are all games that people talk about for the story, right? They talk about how powerful the stories was, the adventures that they went on, uh, and yet most players who pick them up don't actually finish them. Um, the other thing that I think that this experiment that Grant um, um, embarked upon is he's confronting this reality that, um, that people who play games actually don't really remember what the stories are about. Uh, there was a study that Microsoft used a research study that found that players had a lot of difficulty tracing the plots of a particular story, um, but they could remember characters. So that was the thing that people remember, and that's the thing that people remember about The Last of Us is the, you know, sort of the relationship between Joel and Ellie. Even if they don't necessarily remember other things about The Last of Us, that's something that they remember. And that's something that you probably could impart to people without playing The Last of Us, but simply by watching this sort of like uh, cinematic take on it. Obviously there's Let's Plays, it's not quite the same thing. This is something that's designed specifically for you to understand the story of The Last of Us and talk about the way you would talk about it like a TV series. So, would The Last of Us work well as a television series? I don't mean like as an adaptation, if it turns, you know, it becomes something that like J.J. Abrams like adapts or whatever for TV. I mean, would The Last of Us, as in its current format or as Grant envisioned it, does it work well as a TV series? Well, here's the thing. There's a couple of things that still don't exist in a game like The Last of Us, one of which is true cliffhanger, since you can always keep playing, right? Like the way the work is presented to you, you, um, um, there's not an option to sort of like wait, or you don't, you're not forced to be out of the wait until next week. Or, you know, I just finished season three of House of Cards, which has a huge cliffhanger, as many, many great television series do. That doesn't quite happen in video games the same way, since you can just decide to play another hour. Just 
play long into the night. Emily Nussbaum writing for The New Yorker, um, she had written that there is something to celebrate about the cliffhanger. Cliffhangers are the signature gambit of serial storytelling. They expose the intimacy between writer's room and fan base, a relationship that can take seasons to develop, years marked by incidents of betrayal, commitment, and occasionally by a kind of ecstasy. And so, you know, what Emily's pointing out is that the nature of the way that television is consumed, even when it's released in chunks, is still something that unfolds over a long period of time. Uh, and that's really important in terms of calcifying our understanding of what something is. That's not necessarily true with The Last of Us in the sense that you buy it, it's there for your completing whenever you want to. The other piece of it is that we still don't have a social component where we anticipate the next episode um, along with the rest of the internet since we're all playing through at different rates. That's why the advantages that episodic games like the ones that Telltale release has in that the way that we conceive of them is very similar or Kentucky Route Zero is very much in, this, in, in the same place. By releasing something in these chunked episodes, it gives people the ability to sort of catch up with everybody else. Oh, did you, well, what episode are you necessarily in? Um, as opposed to, you know, it's funny, the idea of binge watching on television is a lot more like a video game, right? It's kind of funny, like television making its experiences more like video games in terms of releasing them all at once, whereas video games are kind of doing the exact opposite and looking to, um, to, to sort of build these episodic formats. It's it's worth noting that Telltale built their entire episodic story structure around the technical constraints of having to release things digitally. They've built their entire company upon it. Um, not every video game developer is going to be able to do that. There's some production concerns there. Nonetheless, I do think that idea that replicating some of these ineffable experiences that television offers is something that video games could, uh, could aspire to. And I think that that's what Grant is ultimately trying to get at with his experiment with The Last of Us. Anyway, um, I hope you get a chance if you haven't played The Last of Us or um, that you go and watch Grant's videos and uh, please hash it out in the comments and I'll see you all next week.